Hello guys and welcome to part two of making this little cactus guy in Blender. So if you haven't already seen part one, you can go ahead and check it out on my channel. But this is gonna be part two where we just quickly finish off some of our lighting materials and just do a few other things. And we're gonna add this cute little particle system to make him look a little bit more realistic. And by the way, if you guys wanna check me out on Skillshare, you can follow the link below to sign up for one month for free. And I've got a lot of really cool content on there. You can watch other stuff on Skillshare as well. And it's something you can try. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to go on um, past one month. So if you want to check that out, it's all there. Um, but anyway, let's get into part two of this tutorial. Okay, so now that we're in part two, we're just gonna add in a few things before we get into the material. So let's just go Shift A, and let's just add in a plane. And with this plane active, let's just scale it by hitting S. And I'm just gonna go about something about that much. Then we're gonna tab in to edit mode and just go to your edge select. Click on the back edge here and just go G, Y and just move it back a little bit. E to extrude and then Z to restrict it to the Z. Bring it up to about here. Then select this edge here and go Control B and just bevel it. And if you roll your middle mouse button, you can control the amount of edges. So we're just gonna roll about this many in and just click tab back into object mode and then right click and let's just go shade smooth and now we can go shift a and let's just add in a camera go to your output settings let's just make the x resolution 1080 and while we have that camera active up here let's just go g y and move it back on the y and for some reason the camera here is just rotated down so if we just go over and hit n to bring up our properties panel just go over to item so we can come here to the rotation, just hover over it, and then just hit the back backspace key, hovering over it, and that's just gonna reset those transforms. But we're just gonna come here to the X, and we're just gonna rotate it up to 90. In fact, just type in 90 degrees. So now it's pointed up the right way. We're now gonna go G, Z, and move it up a little bit. Then just go over to your camera settings, and let's just go to the focal length and make it 120. So 120, hit enter. And now just hit zero to go into your camera view. Then hit G, middle mouse button, and just move your mouse back a little bit, just to zoom out. Then go G, Z, and move your camera up. R, X, and just rotate it down a little bit. And you can also just hit G to move the camera. So I'm in camera view while I'm doing that. And now we have it positioned where we want it. We can now go Control B or Command B. And in camera view, if you just click and drag with that, and you drag it over to camera view, you will limit the rendering in the viewport to the camera. That's just gonna make things a little bit more efficient for us when we're working with viewport rendering and things won't slow down so much. If you're gonna be working with EV, um, you don't have to worry about that. But when we're working with cycles, which we're gonna be doing, uh, we that is something that's really handy. So let's just go over to our render settings, click on the little camera here. Now let's just change the engine to cycles and you can come here to the device. And if you have a GPU, I would definitely recommend using it. So just click on GPU. Uh, if you have a CPU, that's fine. We're just also gonna go to denoising and I would recommend that you enable it for the render and that you change it to optic. So that's just gonna help with denoising it once we do the render. If you don't wanna do that, you can also just bump the samples up. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but the higher that render sample amount is, the, the nicer the final result will look. So we're gonna hit zero to go into our camera view and um, let's just close that. So what we're gonna do now is add in a few lights. So let's go Shift A, let's just add in a area light. And let's go G, Z and move it up. Go to our light settings and let's just give it a strength of 200. And let's come to the size and make it something like two, maybe even three. So let's just try three or four. And let's go Z, go rendered and camera view. And you can see that's what we have. So now we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate that light with it active. R to rotate it in. I'm gonna go to my top view and just rotate it in a little bit more. Shift D to duplicate it. And let's have one coming from the left here. Hit zero to go into camera view. And let's go to our world settings and let's just bring the color value up a little bit so it's not as dark in our world environment. Make sure to save as you go. And we're now gonna click on our pot. So just select the pot here. And this is going to our shading workspace. And hit zero to go into your camera view. Hit Z and then go rendered. So we can now see the rendered view here. So with that pot active, we're gonna go new. And let's just call this material pot. And what we're gonna do to make it textures, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go search, 
I'm going to type in noise and I'm going to get a noise texture. I'm going to plug the color into the base color of the principal. We're then going to go shift A, click on search, type in color and get a color ramp, place it on this cable here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this black and white value here. So just slide these closer together for a bit more contrast. We're going to use them as a mix. So if we go shift A and we go search, we can type in mix RGB, place it on this cable here. So it's in between the color and the principled. And make sure that the color output here goes into the factor and the color here should be connected to the base color of the principled. We're just going to change the top color to a light terracotta color something like that. And the bottom, we're going to make the same, but we're going to bring the value down quite a bit. So now you can see it's mixing between those two colors and you can increase or decrease the contrast here depending on what you're trying to achieve. But what we want to do as well is come to the scale and make it 55 or even 35. Let's just try that. So about 35 seems okay. And you can mess around with this slider here. So now we have that established. Let's go shift A, search, type in bump, click on the bump, and let's just take the color output, plug it into the height here, and then take the normal output of that bump and plug it into the normal input of our principled. And let's just make the strength here 0.2. And now we have our pot here looking pretty cool. I'm just gonna also increase the roughness because terracotta is very porous, so the light gets scattered a lot, so it doesn't look very reflective. So now we have that all sorted out. And like I said, you can mess around with these colors as much as you want, mess around with the contrast of these values here, but just try and get something you like. So I'm happy with the way this pot looks for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here, drag over all of these nodes, right click, and we're gonna go copy. So we're gonna be reusing them. So let's click on the cactus. Let's go new, and let's just call it cactus. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click here, drag over these two nodes, X to delete them, and then we're gonna go right click, and we're gonna go paste. So now all we have to do is come here to these colors and let's change them to a nice green color. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the bottom. Just a nice kind of these two green colors. We can also come here to the roughness, decrease that a little bit. And with the bump here, we're gonna take the strength to 0.5. And I'm also gonna come here to the scale and make it 12. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Maybe I'll just come to the strength and make it 0.2. I think that might look a little bit better. So that's our cactus, cactus surface there. So we're now gonna select our glasses and we're gonna go new. And let's just come to the base color here and make that a nice pinkish color, pinkish red, and bring the roughness down. So now it looks a bit plasticky. Click on the eyes, let's go new material and let's just call it eyes. And let's make those black and bring the roughness down. So we just get this nice reflective beady eyes that look really cute and they're very simple to make. Let's also just select our background here, the plane. Let's go new and just call it floor. And let's go to base color and just give it like a robin's egg blue kind of color. Something like that looks really cool, really complements the look of this. So now let's get into our particles. So the particles really help this look cool. So let's just go and click on the cactus, make sure to save. And let's just go over to our particles here. In fact, let's just hit Z and go into solid view. And under our particles here, with the cactus selector, we're gonna get plus. We're gonna make it hairs. We're gonna bring the hair length down to as much as we want. So let's go about 0 0.15. Let's just go to the viewport display. Um, let's just take the strand steps up to four. Let's go to the children here and let's make it interpolated. And let's just give it some roughness. Let's go to the roughness here. And let's just take the random here and increase that. Let's just also go to the end point here and increase that as well to make it nice and frizzy. And that's about all we have to do for now. But at the moment, if we hit Z and we go render it, it's gonna be using the same cactus material, which doesn't really look good. So let's just go to our materials. And you can see we have the cactus here. We're just gonna hit plus one more time. Go new and let's just call this hairs. And let's just go over to our material here. Let's go down, sorry, let's just go to our particles here. And let's just go down to the render under the particles. Go to the material and let's change that to hairs. And now if we hit Z and we go rendered, you can see over here we have this new hairs material. So all we're gonna do is come to the base color here and we're gonna make it slightly, very slightly green, greenish. So almost white, but just very slightly green. We're now going to go 
over here under our children. And let's just make the render amount 12 and we'll leave the display amount as 10. So the display amount is just what you see in the viewport, not the final render. So you don't need too many little hairs. So now we have that done. Let's just also select a pot, tab into edit mode and just select an edge on this dirt object. Hit control L to make it active. Go to the materials, hit plus, assign, go new, and let's just call this dirt. And let's just make that brown. Okay, you don't have to do that, but just having that extra material, if you now hit Z and you go rendered, that has its own material. You can add a texture to that, a dirt texture or something, um, but I'm just gonna keep it really simple like this. So now we have that all done. What we're gonna do now is just make our lighting a little bit nicer, so make this really pop out. So what we're gonna do is add some rim lights. So we're gonna go Shift A, and let's just go to our point lights, add in a point light, G, and move it over here. Let's just make the strength 50, and increase the radius a little bit. Hit Z, go rendered, and now you can see we have this light here, but if we move it just to the side and just behind the cactus, and we duplicate it, and we just move a few of them around the perimeter, it's gonna create this nice rim lighting effect that's gonna make our subject pop from the background. So this is a nice little trick you can use for really making things stand out. So I'm gonna just maybe move one a little bit here to the side, bring one in here. So let's hit Z, go render to see what that looks like. And that's already really helping it to pop from the background. We can also grab one of these area lights, Shift D to duplicate it, rotate it in, rotate it down. Let's just make the strength 120. And I feel like it just needs a little bit more light from the front. So I'm gonna go into my camera view, I'm gonna hit Z, gonna go rendered, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's looking a lot better. I might just move it up a little bit. And just experiment with your lights, move them around, rotate them, see what works. So this is just a basic little setup. But with my original one that I practiced, I spent a lot more time with the lights and the colors and stuff. But you can take your time with that. So experiment, mess around with the things. You can also just select a geometry if you want, any time you want, just scale it, add in some more edges, make it look a little bit more cartoony. Um, it really is up to you how you wanna um, modify this to make it look really unique. So I always encourage you guys to try and do that, to not follow my tutorial exactly, but to try and kind of add your own little twist to the whole thing. So you can see here, it's really starting to look cool. So I'm gonna leave it at this for now, and let's just quickly do a nice test render. So we're gonna go render, render image, and let's just see what that looks like. And there we have it, the rendering is now done, and that was a pretty quick little um, thing to make. It didn't take long at all. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this two-part tutorial. So if you haven't, like I said, seen part one, you can go check it out, and you can then follow on to part two. And definitely try and build upon this little character design, try and make it your own, try and add maybe some limbs if you want, maybe add a mouth, experiment a little bit, add some flowers, maybe add some hats or scarf, um, but definitely try it out. And I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. And if you guys wanna also sign up to Skillshare to watch some of my premium courses, you can actually get it free for one month before you decide if you wanna join or not by following my link in the description below. So I'm gonna put a link to my Skillshare um, discount thing in the bottom. You can click on that, you can sign up to Skillshare of that link, and you can get one month free, and you can decide whether you wanna do it or not. And I've got a lot of really cool, awesome courses on there that include all of the blend files and stuff. You can make really cool things, like a, like a B animation, or you can make your own character from scratch. There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can check out on my Skillshare. I'll see you guys next time for another blend tutorial, and thank you for watching.